Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. Today's video is is, is weird. Um, it's going to be transfer related. Obviously, we're in the month of January. And transfer talk, transfer rumours, transfer news is going to dominate every football channel throughout the month of January. It's a big time. Every team trying to improve. And Celtic are one of those teams trying to improve. And we've spoke about it time and time again, what Celtic need to do, um, etc, etc. Now, there's been a lot of talk about players coming and players going. There's a lot to kind of round up on, and I'll get round to doing bits and bobs of everything, and, and when the window actually finishes, I'll round up absolutely everything. But it's not over yet, Celtic still have a lot of signings to, to make. Still waiting on a right back, there's been the talk about Gutman apparently agreeing a deal. Still waiting, there'll be talk about um, the other uh, the other guy, um, forgot his name. God knows, forgot his name, it slipped off the top of my head. But you know, there's talk about this, that, next thing, then we're hearing all rumours. And then there's talk about, you know, we're hearing apparently Comper's ready to be let go and uh, Big Malumbu I seen this morning is apparently ready to be let go as well after only three appearances in a fucking Celtic shot. But uh, today we're here to talk about the pipe dreams and how realistic the chances are on us making one of the signings, one of the many signings that have been thrown about over the past couple of days on the internet regarding central midfielders, just central midfield alone, that is that's genuinely it. There has been four names thrown into the bag since um you know, even the start of the window, but more recently it's kind of um grew and grew and the, the files burnt a little bit more and there's been talks and such everywhere on the internet that this could be happening. People talking on Twitter as if it's gonna happen and such. Now look, these are all pipe dreams and I'm gonna give my opinion to each and every single one in this video. Um, they're big names, like, you know, Celtic get yeah, this transfer window have to sign a big name. Now, how big is a big name for, for Scottish football? I mean, genuinely, anybody, I think you could literally, if Rangers were to go and sign fucking Glenn Murray for Brighton, I think they'd be throwing the big name handle on it, um, because, just because he plays in the Premier League. You know, obviously, we've seen the likes of Defoe come up here this month, um, uh, you know, that's kind of setting both sets of fans off and I said like, they should be making signings like this all the time I'm not too keen on the Defoe signing uh, I wouldn't be too keen if I was a Rangers fan I've said that um, I wouldn't be over the moon I mean he was a fantastic player no doubt about that but um, does it mean that we should automatically go and look for these worn out you know Premier League players coming towards the end of their careers um, should we necessarily look into these signings for me, I I seen a tweet the other day, or a, a com no, it was actually a comment in one of my videos, and it was along the lines of Rangers are out signing Premier League veterans, uh, proven players, and some of the best players. Um, well, Celtic are signing uh, washed, uh, not even washed out. Washed out isn't the term. That's that's more for the the, the four signings. Um, signing young players who know nothing about the game, shy, unproven, blah blah blah. For me, I would rather be in the position of Celtic, um, signing young guys who have proven themselves in their own league. We'll look at Bio, for example, tearing up the Slovakian league, um, scoring goals left, right and centre in a league that is an equal par with Scotland. He could easily come and do it here, whereas Jermaine Defoe has struggled for fitness and first team football for the last, you know, year or two of his career. Uh, and there's no denying he's a good player, I'm not being sour about it. Um, but I don't see what's wrong with Celtic wanting to take the chances on these young players because uh, look what happened to the likes of Moussa Dembele um, just right away we made 20 million pounds off him 20 million a lot of money in Scottish football it's the biggest sale in uh, Scottish football history isn't it so you know that's just a, a quick point but anyway the signings we're talking about there's been names thrown in first one Victor Wanyama what I would do personally to bring Victor Wanyama back to Celtic um, I cannot put any words. I would kill to have Victor Wanyama back in the Celtic lineup. A player who, when he was at Celtic, was a machine. He dominated the midfield. He had such a physical presence and such a good technical ability as well. He was great with the ball. He scored some very important goals. The main one being against Barcelona, probably. Um, a fantastic goal round player, and he went. He's went down to Spurs, and he's actually done really well. It's just a shame that over the kind of last year. He's fell out the team. I'm sure he got injured at a point as well and that never helped him. And he's just kind of out of favour because Spurs do have players who are, are better. Uh, and that's simple. Like Wanyama is a great player. He'd walk into any other Premier League team, um, apart from maybe, you know, the likes of Liverpool, Manchester City. He'd walk into any other Premier League team. For the, the slim chance of him ever coming back to Celtic, I would die if he came back. 
I would love it. What a fantastic player. I'd take him back in a heartbeat. Now, this is the thing, though. People were sitting talking on Twitter as if it was a realistic possibility and it was definitely going to happen. Yes, I'm sure he's still got a place in his heart for Celtic. There's no denying that. He probably does still have a bit of passion for the club. But we have to remember, it's a guy playing for Tottenham Hotspur under probably about £70,000, £80,000 a week. Celtic can't afford that. He's not going to take a wage, wage drop to thirty grand a week um, when he could move to a t side like, say, Everton or West Ham, get first-team football there for the same wage that he's earning right now at Tottenham Hotspur. He could easily do that, and I, I imagine he'd rather do that. The realistic possibility of Victor Wanyama signing is very low. Now, a lot of people talking about potentially him coming in on a loan deal, split the wage with Tottenham. Yes, that seems like a more realistic possibility to take him in for six months, maybe a year, maybe a year and a half, and uh, give him the first-team football that he wants and needs, get him into the European football again. But at the end of the day... I'm sure, for the sake of his career, the guy would want to choose to move to a team permanently, get back at the first team value up his, you know, first team football up his value, etc., etc. Victor Wanyama come back to Celtic is nothing but a dream. It's not going to happen. I don't love it to happen. If it does happen, then highly fucking lawyer. But I just don't see it. It's a shame, a real shame, because I would love it. I can't express that enough. Yaya Turi was the second name thrown at the back. Who obviously moved on to... Where was it he went again? He went, obviously, big, massive career at Manchester City. Great midfielder. One of the greatest the Premier League has probably ever seen. Um, I mean, for such a big guy, he was just so good with the ball at his feet and everything. A good set-piece taker. Something that Celtic lack at the minute. So that means I'd love to take him in. Once again, though, a player who... I look at the same light as what I look at as Jermaine Defoe. Has he got the fitness to come up to Scotland to play week in, week out? Yes, he'd probably tan half the players up here to fucking show them up and embarrass them. Um, but has he got the energy? Has he got the fitness to play week in, week out in Scottish football? Um, I don't think so. And we could definitely find people who are younger and probably have more potential than them because Tudy would burn their wage. Another player who, when it comes to Manuel, I'm saying an unrealistic wage. This is an even more unrealistic wage. At Manchester City, this is a guy who's on triple figures a week. Um, you know, £150,000. Uh, we are talking here. And he's not done much recently. I don't see why so many fans were so eager to bring him in. Yes, he's had a big career. Yes, he was a big player. Personally, I just wouldn't want him a Celtic, though. Um, I just, I feel like it's just a, a kind of last-ditch attempt to bring someone in. And yes, it'd be great for depth, don't get me wrong. This is a player who's not going to come at Celtic and s unless he knows he's not fit enough to be first-team player. He's not going to come and settle for second fiddle. No chance. He'd want the first-team football. And he's just... He's a bit old. Clunky. I don't think he would offer too much. Um, it'd be a great tutor, of course. We've seen Cole come in and Cole came in and, and, and done well at coaching and then became a coach at Celtic. Yeah, yeah, too, might do the same, maybe sees the attraction as well being there. Once again, though, it's a transfer, I just don't think it's going to happen. All these unrealistic stories we need to stop buying into. Third one, James McCarthy. Everybody comment my videos, get McCarthy, McCarthy, McCarthy. Get him, get McCarthy. Why am I not going for McCarthy? There has been a couple of things creeping up on social media. I was reading on Read Celtic, I've actually got the article up um, right now. James McCarthy, obviously growing up a Celtic fan. Um, I, and the way the article, the article was published yesterday. Uh, on, on, on Reed Celtic by Daniel Emery and apparently Celtic are set for transfer talks on Wednesday yesterday being Wednesday not heard any further concrete information um, but you know he's a player who I'd kill to have at Celtic as well I'd take him a heartbeat a bit younger uh, than Yaya Toure and such I still think he's got a lot left in the tank obviously he's fairly a favourite at Everton he's not been playing the football that the time and the amount of football that would ideally suit him but if he came to Celtic he'd be in the first team after you know getting his fitness back and getting his uh, his boots back on he would be in the first team there's no doubt about that absolutely not um, a bad take him uh, and I think he would be a great asset to the team realistically is it going to happen no we've not heard anything further and it's like these are all pipe dreams that's what I want us to realise the point of this video is where are the signings where are the real signings why are we having to get so hyped up on these stories which have no truth to them uh, and, and have a, such a small possibility of actually happening. Where are the real deals? Get them out Celtic. And finally the last one I talk about is Scott McTominay who apparently Celtic are interested on bringing in a loan uh, until the end of the season. Apparently Aberdeen also looking into it uh, as well. Um, he's not had as much time at Man United as he probably likes this season. Celtic would be the, the most ideal place for him to come in my eyes. A player who I'd also take happily at Celtic offers a bit more of a defensive um, 
attitude towards the midfield because we've got a lot of great attacking players. I've got Roger McGregor, uh, Christie, great attackers. I think we're lacking that side, that kind of core, that kind of defensive anchor man. And Tommy probably could come in and do that for six months. And he's, he's played at the highest level already. He's played in the Champions League. He's played in the Premier League. He's played under big big managers. Big manager. Jose Mourinho who did get sacked, yes. But still, four players, four central midfielders. Do you think any of them will actually come to Celtic? I'd kill for any of them, really. Apart from Yaya Toure, as I said. I wouldn't really want him. But... What's going to happen? Where are we going? Pipe dreams. We don't want pipe dreams, Celtic. We want the real thing. We want transfers. Get it done. We've got half a transfer window to go now. Like and subscribe if you've enjoyed. Let me know your opinions to my opinions. And I'll see you all next time.